Aquaba, welcome brothers and sisters to the Black Slate Atlanta podcast. The Black Slate is an independent, not-for-profit social and political action team. Our goal is to tackle the issues affecting our low to moderate income communities in the Atlanta area. We will focus on topics that are centered around impacting legislation and decisions that target our neighborhoods. Through commentary and interviews, we hope you will find the Black Slate Atlanta podcast beneficial and enlightening. Aquaba, and welcome, brothers and sisters, to the inaugural broadcast of the Black Slate Atlanta podcast. This month of October is our 50th anniversary for the Black Slate. For those brothers and sisters who are not familiar with the Black Slate, please visit our website at www.blackslateatl.org. We are happy and honored to have as our inaugural guest, City of Atlanta Councilwoman Keisha Waits. She holds the at-large post three position on the council, serving all of the city and specifically representing Southeast Atlanta, parts of Clayton and DeKalb County, and the cities of East Point, and College Park. Ms. Waits has previously served in the Georgia General Assembly House of Representatives. While there, she had authored and supported numerous bills that were designed to have a positive impact on all the citizens of Georgia. Our topic of information for today's podcast will focus on the closed down medical facility Wellstar Hospital on Boulevard Avenue in Atlanta. Our Black Slate host for this podcast will be founder Elray Tacoma Hill, coordinator for the Black Slate Atlanta. Councilwoman Keisha Waits, so good to uh, have this dialogue uh, with you uh, this afternoon. Uh, been really looking forward to uh, talking with you. Uh, I've seen and we, the Black Slate Committee, have seen uh, you in action in terms of uh, your advocacy uh, for the citizens of Atlanta and especially for our community. Uh, today, we wanted to uh, kind of chit chat uh, about the uh, Wellstar uh, Hospital that uh, closed down a, a while back. And uh, you had presented a resolution and proposal uh, for uh, something to be done uh, with that. And so I uh, kind of want to jump into that and uh, talk about uh, what that is that uh, that you would like to see happen. Y yes, sir. I, I want to give a little background. So I'm born and raised and I'm from Atlanta. I am a Grady baby. And so my grandparents and most of my relatives received service from what was then called the Georgia Baptist Hospital. One of the reasons that this particular proposal is of personal importance to me is because I see a unique opportunity on that particular corner. In Atlanta, affordable housing is a major problem and or issue. And so to create an equity and wellness center would address a number of challenges at one time, specific mm -hmm. drug and alcohol treatment mental health services, mm -hmm. the need for 140 hospital-style beds. Currently in Atlanta, as you know, we're locking up and incarcerating people with mental health challenges because we don't have anywhere to put them. We are having conversations about shipping inmates to another state, uh, which is going to cost the taxpayers millions of dollars. And so this particular uh, opportunity and our property can serve so many different people. Uh, we have a massive unsheltered and homeless population. We have people who work 40 hours a week, but because they cannot afford the rent in Atlanta, they are now sleeping in their vehicles and having to look to uh, alternative services for housing. This is not the Atlanta way. This is not the city that I grew up in. And if we're going to spend $67 million on a public safety training facility, many have called Cop City, which I do not call it that. 
uh, I believe that we can better spend those resources taking care of those who need our help, those that are underserved and have unmet needs in our city. Okay, well, I appreciate that uh, information and background. And uh, I understand that uh, Wellstar, when they initially kind of folded shop, they were talking about how, uh, you know, there was uh, other facilities, Grady and Midtown. Uh, is, is that reasonable for uh, the citizens in the area that have been used to uh, coming in there for services? What kind of hardships? Great question. So I think that there's a level of disingenuousness. So to say that uh, the facility was operating in the red, that they weren't really making money, and I, I don't necessarily believe that that is true. Uh, and I don't expect for a hospital to operate uh, without a profit margin. I'm not naive any, by any means. But what I do believe is that we have a, a history and a historical pattern of divesting in communities where the needs are the greatest. And I think that until we revamp how we do healthcare and medicine in this country, you will continue to see that happen. Point, case in point, right now, and, and, and this is, I, I, I choose my words carefully. If we had a cure for AIDS, HIV, or cancer, would we reveal that cure or is it just too much money uh, in prolonging life? We are aware that there is a lifetime tire that you can put on your vehicle that will never go flat ever again. Well, guess what? The lobbyists pay this particular facility to keep it off the market so that we can sell tires. And that is how I see healthcare in the United States of America. So I just believe that until we have the will and the commitment, you will continue to see uh, a situation where those who have specific needs, and I'm referring to seniors, I'm referring to the working uh, uh, families, I'm referring to people who have no health care in the United States. Why have other countries been able to successfully do this and we have not? And uh, the last thought is this. We are in a city where you have a multitude of Fortune 500 companies that make significant investments. Wall Street gave the city 20 million last year and again this year. Why not use those philanthropic, those corporate relationships, leverage our resources uh, for the county, for the state to build and create uh, opportunities for those who need us? And I also believe the $4 million that we just paid out to the Dorado family uh, for police uh, uh, challenges with uh, uh, use of force cases, that money, in addition to the 76 million, 67 million could certainly go a long way. So we're talking about nearly $71 million. To get this project off the ground, we're talking about roughly 100 million. Yeah. Wellstar donates the property. And so that's one of the reasons that I'm asking Wellstar to donate this property uh, as a goodwill measure, as a tax write-off, as an investment uh, into our communities and come back with a clinic to come back with wraparound services. Because can you imagine, sir, if we could put a thousand people back on the rosters in terms of productivity, a mini court, uh, transitional housing, job training, to reintegrate folks back into the workforce, it's a game changer. And I believe what better place than the cradle of the civil rights movement, the birthplace of Dr. King, the former home of Congressman, the late Congressman John Lewis, there's no better place to put it than right here in Atlanta where we can serve as a model for the United States of America. Let me ask, uh, let me ask you this, uh, my sister, uh, in terms of uh, um, all the effort that you've uh, put into to this uh, so far, uh, what type of support, if any, have you got from other council members or businesses, community uh, folks? Interestingly, uh, the council members have been slow to engage on this process. The thought process is, Keisha, where are we going to find the money? Well, I let me tell you. I received a phone call from CVS, who has agreed to build the training facility. I received a phone call from Aetna, who has agreed to put in uh, a health and wellness clinic. 
one of the developers that was responsible for building the dome, as well as a number of significant projects all over the city of Atlanta, has stepped up and said that I'll provide the architectural support. So I believe once we get serious uh, about this conversation, and I'm, I'm hoping you will join me as we sit down with our Wellstar partners and have a conversation with them regarding the vision, that others will sign on. We have a number of corporations in the city of Atlanta who understand the significance of having two level one trauma centers. Right now, we only have one service in the entire region. So this is a homeland security issue. Should we have a major incident here in the city of Atlanta? And so, you know, the support has not been, has not, it hasn't been overwhelming, but I'll tell you this. When Zion and Cameron were killed on the 17th Street Bridge, bridge last November during the Thanksgiving holidays, no one wanted to have a conversation about a curfew in the city of Atlanta. Where Asia Powell recently passed uh, at a school sanctioned event due to gun violence, and we were able to pass that legislation. When I initially talked about cameras at every single gas station throughout the city of Atlanta, People were very slow to sign on saying, oh, we're going to burden the, the commercial community. Oh, we don't want to uh, be a burden financially to our business partners. But the reality is this. You have nearly 50,000 people who come in and out of gas stations every day. It is a win for the community. It is a win for the establishment when we have bad actors who participate in illegal activity. If we can catch them in the act, if we can tie into the 911 system and have access that to, to give law enforcement just one more tool to do their job, it's a win. So we didn't have the support, but we were able, my friend, to get that legislation passed because we were able to help individuals understand the community benefit involved and get others from the industry to later sign on. And so the support has been slow, but here's what I am a God-fearing woman. Rome was not conquered in a day. And so uh, we will continue to advocate because we understand what is at stake. We are subsidizing poverty in the United States of America, in the city of Atlanta. And so we need tough leadership, strong leadership who are willing to stand flat-footed and speak truth to power. And we need this for our community. And I will continue uh, to advocate as well as find others who are like-minded to join this conversation. Great, great. Uh, I know uh, a lot of folks see us, uh, the Black Slate, out in the streets, you know, waving signs and knocking on doors and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, but we are committed to uh, more than that. Uh, part of our goal and mission is to support uh, those that uh, we help get elected after they are elected in terms of whatever uh, they see uh, support need. Uh, so I would follow up and say, uh, you know, whatever you need, specifically from us as a Black Slate Committee, uh, we're willing uh, to get on board with it. And uh, what other steps uh, can we uh, uh, give information, I guess, out to the community in terms of how they can support and uh, back you as you continue to generate this, hopefully a snowball effect? Well, I'm glad you asked that. And it's interesting because I, I, I think it's important. I don't know if you remember during our initial conversations, uh, there was a questionnaire that you had us to fill out. So I'd like to revisit some of those commitments. But during our initial conversation, I said one thing to you that stands out. If we do not deliver, if we are not responsive, we should be fired. Our elected officials at the local, the county, the state, and the federal level, you just saw Kevin McCarthy has been ousted, by right. the way. And, and I have a dog in that fight because I don't believe that it is the, the Democrats' job to manage what's happening in the Republican Party. I don't believe that. But what I do understand is that any instability in Washington directly impacts what's happening here in Georgia. To your point, what do we need? In Georgia, we just Take, took 189,000 folks off the roads, the voter roads in the state of Georgia. Why should that alarm us? Because many people don't know that they've even been taken off the roads. There is nothing more powerful than the opportunity to vote, choose your leadership, or kick them out. 
And so I simply say, please encourage our audiences, your network, your stakeholders, not only to be registered to vote, but to be engaged in those conversations. Show up at city hall meetings, show up at county commission meetings, show up when the Georgia General Assembly is in because they're making decisions that have a direct impact on you. Lastly, choose judges that are fair and that are qualified because those judicial appointments have a direct impact on the lives of our brothers and sisters here. We were able to change policy in the city of Atlanta surrounding marijuana usage. And I'm not advocating for or against drug activity, but we should be locking up folks who have an ounce of marijuana in their vehicles for a multitude of years. And so those policies are slowly starting to come down. We have a number of our brothers and sisters who are incarcerated based on old antiquated policies that no longer serve society. We have found out during the time frame that I was a state representative at the Capitol that mandatory life sentences do no one. They do more harm than they do good. And finally, please, please, please get engaged. The squeaky wheel gets the oil. When you see something, say something. Be engaged in those community conversations. And if we don't like what they're saying, change the folks that are in leadership. Okay. All right. Well, we'll uh, definitely, as uh, we uh, move down the road, uh, begin to uh, spread this message to our contacts and, and the resources that we have. And uh, hopefully, like I say, get uh, like a snowball going down uh, specifically on this uh, Wellstar uh, issue. Um, on down the line, um, there are as you kind of touched on a number of issues uh, for the city of Atlanta. And uh, we're definitely plan on uh, having further discussions with you and uh, other people regarding some of those concerns and some of those issues. Uh, but uh, we appreciate you uh, taking some time out of your busy schedule to uh, kick off this uh, inaugural uh, podcast uh, for the Black Slate. So uh, thank you, uh, my sister, very much. Thank you for the opportunity. I will be in front of a computer when we meet again. We have an election coming up this cycle. Many of them will be municipal races as well as school board races. And so uh, elections. And so I'm hoping that you can ask our audience, our network, our stakeholders to please be engaged in those elections. Uh, elections, as we know, have consequences. If you are not sure, if you have moved, if you've changed your address, please check your voter registration on the Secretary of State website. I'm going to send you a link for that information. And lastly, be engaged in your community, whether it's running for office, whether it's picking up the phone or demanding justice when you see injustice. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank the Black Slate. Uh, for being engaged. And you know, we have some big races that's going to be coming up next year. Qualifying is in March. Uh, the election will be May of 2024. And I will just be feeding information as I see it. We'll be watching what happens in Washington, D.C. And if there's anything that you can think of that I should be working on, that we should read defective focus for working families, because regardless of whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, we want a safe community. We want quality Man. schools. We want safe water. <laughs> and so these are bipartisan issues that we can all uh, corral around and collaborate and work together. Yeah, well, consider it done, my dears. Consider it done. Brothers and sisters, you have been listening to Atlanta City Councilwoman Keisha Waits as she discussed the closing of the Atlanta Medical Center's Wellstar Hospital and what we can do as citizens to help our community move forward to provide the medical services and resources we need as a community to achieve and maintain good health in our community. For more information about today's topic, you can contact Councilwoman Waits by email at kwaits at Atlanta GA. Gov. And you can contact the Black Slate at blackslateatl10 at yahoo.com. Visit our website at www.blackslateatl.org or you can scan our QR code for more information. We invite you to like, comment, and share the Black Slate ATL podcast with your network and support us by volunteering for our upcoming events. Join us again 
for our next Black Slate ATL podcast. Thank you for joining us for the Black Slate Atlanta podcast, where we address issues that impact our communities in the Atlanta area. Please let us know if you would like to join and help us address the issues that impact the legislation and decisions which affect our neighborhoods and our daily lives. We hope you found the Black Slate Atlanta podcast to be beneficial and enlightening. If you have any topics or issues that you would like us to address, or if you would like to volunteer to join the Black Slate Atlanta movement, email us at blackslateatl10 at yahoo.com. Also, visit our website at www.blackslateatl.org or scan our QR code for more information. Join us again for the next Black Slate Atlanta podcast and help us help you by holding our elected officials accountable to the needs and interests of our community. Fight the power. Fight the power.